Well, the important thing to realize is that the tools to actually create uh, intellectual and artistic, scientific creations are in everybody's hands. You don't have to influence some government agency or a Hollywood studio. You can create a movie, uh, a recorded album, some disruptive computerized technology, uh, you know, right in your dorm room. And, uh, and that's happening all the time. Uh, Google was created by a couple of kids. It's just a dorm room project. It was just an experiment they thought it would be cool to do. Uh, so actually find things that you think are cool to do, that you have a passion about. Uh, knowledge, which is really what human beings create, and then we change our circumstances with the knowledge we create, uh, requires passion to create. And to find what you have passion for, and it doesn't have to be an engineering project, it can be some cultural project. The tools for creating cultural projects are also growing more and more powerful. And try to anticipate where technology will be. If your project's going to take three or four years, the world will be a very different place three or four years hence. I've been involved with Reading Machines for the Blind for 35 years. And in 2002, I sat down with the head of the National Federation of the Blind, and he said, Ray, you've been talking about a handheld reading machine that you can take out of your pocket for many years. When do you think this will be feasible? And I said, well, according to our models, uh, we'll have the requisite hardware to do this in six years, in 2008. And he said, well, how long do you think it'll take to do the software? And I said, about six years. So he said, let's get started. So we got started in 2002, even though the hardware to support this was nowhere to be seen, and people were skeptical that it would actually only take six years. It seemed like it would take decades. Uh, so we tried to look where technology would be, and we actually caught that train very successfully. The cell phones that could support this application came out in 2008. We got the software done on time, and we were able to introduce this project. It would have taken years longer if we waited until we saw it, and it started in 2008. It would be many years then before that project would see the light of day. The world is a very different place a few years hence. Think back now, six, seven years ago, most people didn't use search engines. There were no social networks, no blogs, no wikis. Imagine life without so, uh, search engines. That sounds like ancient history. That was only six or seven years ago. So anticipate where the world will be. Uh, design your project for the world three or four years hence. Uh, you really can't predict the nature of these technologies because they grow in a predictable but exponential manner. And the opportunities for change and for making solutions to problems, doing projects that may seem impossible uh, becomes increasingly uh, powerful and evident. Uh, and that's, that's really a lot of power we have in our hands to solve problems, overcome suffering, do creative projects uh, that were impossible. My father couldn't even hear his music compositions without raising money and hiring an orchestra. And now you can command a whole orchestra in your dorm room. And the, the tools we have to, to create Virtual realities, virtual worlds uh, are getting more and more powerful. And it also puts us more and more in touch with each other. So I think it's a very exciting time to be a young person. Find what you have a passion for. Find what you have a skill for. And all of these different areas will be amplified by these uh, technological developments.